again to the lecture series of Titli Solution 2023. In this video, I'll be solving the questions of engineering mechanics. So let's get started. The first question we have is question number 52. It says the angles between two forces to make the resultant a minimum and a maximum respectively are. We know the resultant of two forces R is given as root over P square plus Q square plus 2 PQ cos theta. Now the resultant to be minimum, the value of cos theta must be minimum. That is cos theta must be equal to minus 1 and this is possible when theta equals 180 degree. So in that case the resultant force will be the difference of the two forces P minus Q. So if one force acts in this direction, the other force should act in the opposite direction. So the angle between these two will be 180 degree. Now the resultant force to be maximum, the value of cos theta must be maximum. That is cos theta must be equal to 1. And this is possible when theta equal to 0 degree. So in that case the resultant R will be the sum of the two forces P plus Q. So if one force acts in this direction, the other force will also act in the same direction as the angle between these two will be 0 degree. So our answer will be option D, 180 degree and 0 degree. Moving on to question number 53. When can two forces be in equilibrium? The options given are they are equal in magnitude, option B, they are collinear, option C, they are opposite in direction, option D, all of the mention. For a two force system, if one force acts in this direction, then to make it in equilibrium, the other force should act in the opposite direction. If the magnitude of first force is F1 and the magnitude of second force is F2, then under equilibrium condition, F1 should be equal to minus F2. And the third condition is that these two forces must be collinear. That is, these two forces must lie in the same straight line. So for two forces to be in equilibrium, these three conditions should be satisfied. One is that magnitude should be equal. They must be opposite in direction and they must be collinear. So our answer will be option D, all of the mention. Question number 54, what is a free body diagram? The options given are, it's the sketch of a moving body that shows internal forces of the body and reaction forces. Option B, it's a sketch of an undisturbed body that shows external forces of the body. Option C, it's a sketch of an isolated body that shows external forces of the body and reaction forces. Option D, none of the above. The answer will be option C. A free body diagram basically depicts the reaction forces and external forces acting on a body. Now moving on to question number 55. Which of the following is the feature of friction? The options given are Option A always acts in the direction opposite to the applied force Option B not a self-adjusting force Option C always acts in the direction of applied force Option D it is an active force Let's say I have a body which is lying on the ground and I am applying a force P to move it the weight force will act in the downward direction 
and there will be a normal reaction in the upward direction this is denoted by n then the friction force will act at the interface of the body and the ground in a direction which is opposite to the direction of applied force denoted by f so this friction force will act in a direction opposite to the direction of applied force p so our answer will be option a always acts in the direction opposite to the applied force question number 56 the kinetic energy of rotating body depends on the options given are angular speed only option b square of angular speed only option c mass only option d mass and angular speed for a rotating body kinetic energy is given as half into i omega square where i is the moment of inertia and omega is the angular speed so kinetic energy basically depends on two factors there is moment of inertia and angular speed and moment of inertia depends on mass of the body so our answer will be option d mass and angular speed question number 57 what is the relationship between each force if three concurrent forces acting on a body according to Lemmy's theorem the options given are directly proportional to the sign of the angle between the other two forces option b inversely proportional to the cosine of the angle between the other two forces option c directly proportional to the cosine of the angle between the other two forces option d inversely proportional to the sign of the angle between the other two forces according to Lemmy's theorem if three concurrent forces are acting on a body say these are the three forces p q and r acting on a body and the angles between each force are alpha beta and gamma so according to Lemmy's theorem each force is proportional to the sign of the angle between the other two forces so if I take the force P then it is proportional to the sign of the opposite angle that is alpha so it will be P by sine alpha equal to Q by opposite to Q we have angle beta so Q by sine beta equal to r by its opposite angle is gamma so r by sine gamma so our answer will be option a directly proportional to the sine of the angle between the other two forces question number 58 the change in the moment is equal to which of the following the options given are rotational moment option b bending moment option c total weight option d area under the shear diagram change in moment dm is written as integration f into dx this integral f into dx denotes the area under the shear diagram so our answer will be option d area under the shear diagram question number 59 the axis about which moment of area is taken is known as the options given are axis of area option b axis of moment option c axis of reference option d axis of rotation the answer will be option c axis of reference Moving on to question number 60. What will be the radius of gyration of a circular plate of diameter 10 cm? We know the relation I equal to a k square. So from this we can write k equals root over I by a. So here k is radius of gyration, I is the moment of inertia and a is the area. 
now for a circular section moment of inertia is given as pi by 64 into d to the power 4 divided by its area which is pi by 4 into d square so pi pi gets cancelled 4 64 we get 16 d square gets cancelled so from here we get root over d square by 16 which is equal to d by 4 now diameter is given as 10 centimeter so 10 by 4 so finally we get 2.5 centimeter as the answer so our answer will be option c 2.5 centimeter now let's move to question number 61 says a body of weight w is placed on an inclined plane the angle made by the inclined plane with the horizontal when the body is on the point of moving down is called the options given are angle of inclination option b angle of repose option c angle of friction option d angle of limiting friction This is the inclined plane on which a body is lying. Its weight force acts in the downward direction. The angle made by this inclined plane with the horizontal plane when the body is on the verge of moving down denoted by alpha is called angle of repose. So our answer will be option B, angle of repose. Question number 62. Radius of gyration of a geometric figure depends on the options given are shape of the area, option B, position of reference, option C, both the shape of area and position of reference, option D, none of this. We know radius of gyration K equals root over I by A. So radius of gyration depends on two factors. One is moment of inertia and the other is area. And this moment of inertia depends on the position of reference. So our answer will be option C. Both the shape of the area and the position of reference. Moving on to the last question, question number 63. Center of gravity and center of mass will be identical in case of the options given are option A object involving effect of large height option b very large object option c object having no effect of large height and space option d none of this usually for symmetrical bodies having no effect of height or weight or space center of gravity and center of mass lie at the same point but for unsymmetrical bodies center of gravity and center of mass may be different so our answer will be option c object having no effect of large height and space so that's all for tonight thank you for listening see you all in the next lecture